Yeah. And let me uh, wrap up this uh, discussion with uh, this uh, last uh, derivation of a formula. So, so you know, y you could, uh, uh, you can actually end it here. Um, wait, where's my purple pen? Uh, you can actually end this um, discussion here, and it wouldn't. There would be nothing wrong with it. You could say this expression is the formula for energy stored in inductor. Because, well, everything here seems reasonable. As in, if I have an inductor, I know everything there is to know about it, then I would know its inductance. And I know the current, so I know it's the current that somehow stores energy in it. So everything seems fine. I don't really have to do anything more there. But um, I want to take this, uh, uh, take a last step that will, once again, I hope uh, remind you of this last step we did here. Because once again, it's, uh, it's uh, intuitive to imagine how energy is stored in a charge. It's uh, far less intuitive to imagine how, how is energy being stored in a current? Like, like the current is just charge moving. So um, once I bring it to that one last step, the similarity between this picture that you saw before and the similarity here will become greater. So let me do this one last step. So do people remember how we went from this step to this step here? Yes, no? If you don't, that's fine. The way I think I did it was I started out with this and plug it in an expression for C for the parallel capacitor. And then we gave some interpretation of, for, to, the, to some grouping of terms. I am going to do the same thing here. I have been very careful not to erase this uh, inductance of a solenoid so that I can plug it in and you know, see if I can make any sense of the resulting um, relationship. So the inductance of a solenoid is, um, so all this, plugging that in, it's equal to 1 half uh, mu naught n squared a over l times i naught squared. Hmm. That doesn't feel like there's anything profound here. One thing I remember I had to do here was I had to rewrite voltage in terms of electric field because electric field is the fundamental quantity I was trying to get at. So I'm going to try to do the same thing here. So I have this relationship between the current and the magnetic field. So I'm going to try to say, all right, let's solve this for the current and plug it in there. Try to get everything in terms of magnetic field instead of current. Let's see what happens. So solving this for current, I naught, it's going to be the magnetic field, B naught, um, times L, sorry, I forgot to change this to lowercase L, uh, divided by mu naught N, right? Let me plug this in there and let's see what happens. Um, so this is equal to 1 half mu naught N squared A over L times all of that squared. So B naught L squared over mu naught N squared. Oops, sorry. Oh, um, um, sorry, I have to square each one of these. Okay. This is the current squared. Everyone good? Okay, so let me cancel out some things that cancel out. There are things that cancel out uh, right from the start. The one factor of length cancels this one factor of length. Uh, number of loops cancel. So it doesn't matter how many loops are there. I mean, it affects your inductance, but in the final expression, the number of loops doesn't matter. That, I don't know, surprising to me. Um, so mu naught kind of, um, one factor of mu naught cancels out this one factor there. So this is what I, See, um, let me write down the cleaned up version. The cleaned up version is one half um, how do I want to write it? Um, ah, let me uh, group, to, uh, group the terms in two groups. 
the first group that I want to write down is one half mu naught, one half mu naught times magnetic field squared. That's the first group of terms. The second group of terms are everything that remains. Area times the length. So A times L. What, what, is, the, uh, what is this quantity? How, what kind of meaning would you assign to that uh, combination of quantity in the second group? Volume, right? Area of the cylinder times the height of the cylinder. So this is the volume inside solenoid. So knowing the left-hand side, that's the energy stored in solenoid, and some quantity times the volume is giving you energy stored in solenoid, what kind of meaning would you assign to this? Yeah, energy density, because it's uh, you know energy is equal to volume times this constant quantity. This is the energy density. So this is the uh, we call this energy density of magnetic field. And you when you now compare it to this expression, you see the similarity here. Um, they have this inexplicable factor of one half that really comes from an integral that we did at some point along the line, and they both are square in terms of the field. And there's some coefficient here. Now, that's the part that you can really explain why is the epsilon not in the numerator and mu not in the denominator that you just have to remember. Okay. So this is the energy density of magnetic field. And um, this is the reason we, you know, so that we can go over this now is the reason we took time to go over this uh, when we did the static electricity to, so that you would have something to refer back to and see that uh, the energy being stored in a current that's flowing through solenoid, in some very abstract, weird way, is similar to energy being stored on a plate of um, plates that are carrying charges. 